Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at if else in JavaScript. So I'm continuing here um, my series of videos for complete beginners on JavaScript and Node.js. And in the last video, we looked at if statements. We looked at this. Um, so I, I would suggest typing this out and getting it working before you tackle this video. And we saw that um, we saw that with an if statement, uh, it will execute code conditionally. So it, this if statement will only run what's in these curly brackets if this condition is true. And the same for this one, of course. So what we've done here is created something which will say activating heating if the temperature supplied on the command line is less than 20. And it will say deactivating heating if the temperature is greater than 21, otherwise it will do nothing at all. Now we can combine these into a single statement uh, because the fact is that it's not very efficient to have two separate checks like this on temperature. Uh, because um, if, if the temperature is less than 20, then if, if this is true, there's no need to then check if it's over 21. If it's less than 20, it can't be over 21. Uh, and yet here we are, we're checking it again. So we, we do this check and we find it's less than 20. So we, we run this when we say activating heating. And then we're checking it again. Is it is it over 21? But it can't be. So we can combine this into a more efficient statement. Before the second if, we write else. So we have else if and we move we move this up to get rid of the blank space here. And now we've got a single if else if statement. And the way this works is if else if is going to execute one of its alternatives and only one. Um, but it, it doesn't bother doing unnecessary checking. So now uh, if we find that the temperature is less than 20, it won't bother checking this because there is no point if else if will only execute one of these two alternatives uh, if if either of them at all and it's a question of which one so this works kind of like the program that we had before uh, except it's very slightly more efficient if i type something above 21 it says deactivating heating and if i type something below 20 it says activating heating and if i type something in the middle um, like 20.5 it just doesn't do anything at all it just finishes all right um, now there we, we can make this even a bit more complicated because so, I could write on the end else let's put it in the right place though else and this is something that will be executed if none of the alternatives above were executed so let's write console.log um, temperature is normal. So if if none of the conditions above it are executed in a sort of compound if else if statement like this, else will be executed. That means that in this statement, we're, we're always going to execute one of these three alternatives. The question is only which one. So um, and it, Java, JavaScript's going to start reading this from the top down. So the first one that it finds that matches, it's going to execute that one and only that one. And if it goes all the way down and gets to the else and finds that none of the above conditions have been executed, then it will execute the else. So now the difference is um, if I type in 20.5, which doesn't trigger either of these two conditions, then it says temperature is normal. If I, if I were to put 19, let's say activating heating, and 30 would be deactivating heating. You can have multiple else if clauses in here. So um, I could put another else if in here and I could say if temperature is greater than 30, um, let's say uh, room is overheating danger. Let's maybe put 35, that's really quite hot, at least where I come from. 
Uh, so and it works as you as you'd expect. So if I put thirty in there, that triggers only deactivating heating. If I put like forty in there, that's going to say, um, yeah. Well, now we've got a problem because uh, if I put forty in there, then um, this is going to get executed first. So we we JavaScript will read this down from the top, and it comes to here and it says, okay. You put 40 in, so this condition is true. The temperature is greater than 21, and it runs this, and then it won't run any of the others because with this if else if statement, you're only going to be you're going to be you're only going to be running one of these clauses, only one of them. Uh, so in this in this case, I can never actually execute this. But supposing I move that up, so I'm going to hold down the Option key and use the arrow to move it up. Got to pay attention to formatting here. Now um, I can run any of these different clauses. So now if I run if I run the program with a temperature of 40, it's going to say room is overheating, danger. If I run it with a temperature of let's say 30, it just says deactivating heating. So hopefully you can see why why that works and why it didn't work when I put 35 down where 21 is because it's going to read from the top it's going to say is this true it's only going to, you have to remember it's only going to do one of these things is this true uh, and if not it will take a look at this is if is this true and if not it will do this as soon as it finds one that's true it will execute it and if none of them are true it's going to execute this so if we were to put in here like what's the normal temperature now according to this um, 20.5 that says temperature is normal okay so um, if you're a beginner definitely try this out this this works the same in a whole bunch of, of programming languages this is the same in Java C C++ a whole bunch of others that I can't even really remember um, but it's it's a really common sort of uh, construction and um, yeah, so try it out for yourself and uh, experiment with it a little bit. And then we're going to move on soon to looking at loops. And in this in this bit of the course, we're just really looking at the absolute most important nuts and bolts of programming, which are, by the way, generally either the same or extremely similar in a whole variety of different programming languages. There are some languages um, that they, they do have this if else if type of idea but they just have slight spelling variations in there. Like in Perl, if I remember rightly, Perl Practical Extraction and Report Language, you would write elif there instead of else if. So you get minor variations like that. But generally, um, even programming languages that don't use the exact same spelling for all the keywords, they have a lot of these constructions in common. And you will, you will usually find in, in a programming language some way of doing this if else if else type of construction. All right, so until next time, happy coding.